way too big. So hot. Test. Boom. Okay, I think that's fine. Oh god, okay. Are we all here? Is this recording actually? Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and this is Historically Adequate. If you're new to my channel, which I'm sure you are, this is my first video, um, here at Historically Adequate, I try to make historical ensembles through an irreverent lens. Today, I am embarking on a journey to turn this 1980s K Unger dress into a 1830s evening gown. Since purchasing this dress, I've been enamored with the sleeves, the plaid, the historic influences. I found various ways to style this dress over the years, whether that's more casual, more dressy, focusing on different influences, planning on the colors. Um, but it wasn't until this past December I took this uh, 1960s gown that I bought from a lovely friend uh, and restyled it to be a 1820s Regency evening gown. Um, that it really kind of clicked that this must become the 1830s gown of my dreams. Using my last alteration as a jumping off point, if you were curious about the process, I do have it on my Instagram, uh, which I'll put on the screen and in the description. Shameless self promo. Um, I have some hard and fast rules going into this project. Hard parameters are, I cannot cut into the dress for obvious reasons. Um, I did have a thought, well, what if I, you know, fix the neckline this way by adding fabric where you can't see it? We can't invisibly add to the dress permanently, I've decided. Um, the fabric itself is just too unique, and then also the fabric is very thin. When I bought this dress, I had to save it from some mildew, which I'm not a laundry scientist, so weakened the fiber. I'm not sure why, um, but if you know, please feel free to comment, um, because I'm glad I got to save it point blank, but it's left it very fragile. Because of that, it scars very easily, um, and it's kind of tissue paper thin, which makes me anxious to pin into it or sew into it because it's going to leave those really gnarly marks. Um, so I can't do anything permanent or um, enter into the actual fibers of the dress. Um, this is where the challenge begins. I really hope you guys can't hear my AC. It's so hot in here. Uh, okay, things we have to change for this dress to work. Okay, these are my makeshift 1830s undergarments. It is a pair of red threaded short Regency stays and a underbust corset layered. Um, I just wore it underneath. As much as I would love to buy the long version for their 1830s stays, which looks so beautiful. I'm a poor student, so we do, we make do with a fashion corset and the real deal. Now that the dress is on, we can see what it, what it looks like and how we're gonna change it. First, I wanna focus on the neckline. Although I did find some extant examples of 1830s dresses with this really severe wrap in the front, um, they were mostly day dresses, and obviously my shift and horse the treat shows. So what I wanted to do is kind of get a more um, off the shoulder evening neckline. This is about as far as it'll go without completely pulling up in the front. But this also helps me out because it raises the waistline far high enough to be more 1830s appropriate. Um, moving on, we got to look at the sleeves. Although the sleeves are fantastic and a great shape already for the 1830s, they're not quite as full and they kind of look more that kind of 1890s style shape. But 
went ahead and made some sleeve plumpers for them using the American Duchess um, pattern that's on their YouTube where they create 1830s style or 1830s gowns, I think from Extant Copies. That I'll link below. Uh, it was really easy to follow and it was free. So that was super fantastic. Um, to make them, I just went ahead and made them out of a, um, right. Okay. That's fixed. Um, an old bed sheet and I stuffed them with K-pop. Uh, if you are familiar with the incomparable Miss Kathy Hay, she recently used K-pop in her peacock dress bum pad, bustle pad, and I thought it was so fantastic. It's a great alternative to cotton or polyfill, both of which are really environmentally detrimental, and K-pop is a better alternative to either of those. I just got some on Amazon. Um, Rip had to use the Amazon, but at least I'm not using polyfill. Um, yeah, it was just really easy to find on Amazon. I can link that below as well. So um, let's put these on. Okay, so as you can see, these are just a little bit rounder. The only issue is they kind of flop around inside the dress, which is not ideal, but um, I can't sew them into the dress. That breaks one of our rules. Next, I wanted to look at the skirt. The skirt is uh, a little full, more full in the front than the back. Uh, they're just a little flat for the era. There's no, like, there's no crinoline or lining in them. What I can do is take a petticoat. This is an 18th century petticoat. I have just very quickly shortened and can throw that on under there. Eventually I will make a more historically appropriate um, petticoat, but this is what we have. We now have a more historically appropriate silhouette. I think this is a pretty good amount of volume for now. Uh, Next is the waistline. At this point and after I figure out how to fix the neckline, we'll sit at a more historically appropriate spot, but this dress is has a um, looser fitting back than in the front. Felt acquired. We have this very sad inch of loose skirt that really should sit like that. So I have to figure out how to fix that as well. Um, I love this belt. Side note, uh, I got this belt off of a Zara blazer and I think it looks very nice for um, 1780s onward. Uh, I just like to let people know what I get stuff and wear. Um, kind of to dispel the myth that you have to make everything from scratch. So, you can find stuff at your local Zara. Um, So we have all the needs we'd like to change and parameters to work within. Not being able to physically sew into this thing will probably be the most challenging. I was thinking of some kind of harness system out of one inch twill tape to go underneath the gown over my corset. There would be tabs to move the neckline out, maybe a flat skirt hook, some kind of decoration on the tab to hide it. I played around with some kind of ribbon tie system initially, but came to the conclusion the understructure had to be static for it to work. This system could be sewn to my corset and I wouldn't have to worry about it sliding around while being worn, and this fixes the inevitable problem of attaching my sleeve supports. I literally just said I can't sew into this dress, but there is a little bit of seam allowance along the skirt I might be able to utilize to hold the waist up without relying on a belt, pretty much avoiding the whole blouse thing and ducktail moment I get at the back. To fix the sagging in the back waist, maybe I can attach hooks and eyes that connect from the back of the harness to the seam allowance I showed. This might take a little bit of experimenting.
now that we've established our plan, let's go get supplies. Okay, we are here in Pilsen at Discount Textile Outlet, and we're gonna shop for supplies. I'm here with Brock. Yeah. There's like 13 rooms of stuff we can look at. Um, I'm gonna take you inside to see what's going on, and uh, yeah. Ooh. gonna show you guys what I have so far. So I have the tape. I'm gonna get four yards for the understructure. Um, this is just for fun, for future projects. And then instead of finding velvet ribbon, I found some organza style ribbon and I'm just going to layer it, I think. Can you see that? I don't know. That's what we're working with so far. For helping. I'm trying to get you in frame. This is really bad. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> now you're in frame. Thank you for helping. <laughs> we did it. Yes. Um, I think we're gonna keep wandering around here in Pilsen, which is a great place to hang out. Um, but otherwise, I think tacos uh, are in order. I, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. I'm hungry. Okay, so now that we're back, um, to we have to build the harness. I went ahead and got the corded tape I showed you guys at uh, the textile outlet. Um, I was looking at just like normal rat tail. They didn't have wide enough twill tape. Um, and this seemed to lay flatter than the, what would the, I guess it's called rat tail. I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff all in one section. Um, but this was over in the elastics and the corsetry, like hook and eye lingerie stuff section. Um, and I think this will work really great. 
I went ahead and got some like no sew clampable skirt hooks, which will help hold the. Um, is this too close? Can you see this? Am I a beauty YouTuber now? Uh, which will help hold the dress away from my neck. Um, and that'll just go directly into the tape. And then I um, went ahead and got the, the two ribbons I showed you, which will help hide the skirt clip. Um, and match the dress pretty well. I also got some other fun secret stuff that I might show you guys later. Um, and then hooks and eyes just for uh, the like back of the skirt and then some other projects that are coming soon. Um, so yeah, now that we have our supplies, let's get to building. morning this is my harness um it needs some adjusting i need to go ahead and sew on the underbust strap which keeps the the shoulders up um and won't be seen and then um gotta put all the hooks and eyes in the back i have to get the waist height correct so i'm trying to decide if what height is good you know i have to make sure that the back is not too high because I'll have the hooks and eyes going along the back to even the hemline. Um, after I do those changes, I need to add where the um, sleeves will tie on. I might go ahead and add a strap right under the arm so I can just tie them on. Um, then the ribbons to hide the tabs and we'll try it all on. Okay, so I have the harness all sewn together. I don't have the mic plugged in. Cool. Okay, now I have the entire harness sewn together. And it fits very nicely over top. My uh, corset hack. Well, it might fit too nicely. Oh my god, okay. Okay, so okay, you can see the tabs on the front. They hold the um, neckline apart. And then I went ahead and sewed snaps on the inside of um, the sleeve supports. So I can go ahead and fit some kind of connective um, situation. Do it where it'll just snap on and attach. So now they won't really fall, sort of, kind of. Um, we'll see how that goes, but uh, so far so good. But yeah.
compliment in my dress. I feel truly, I think I won. Okay. Well, I think I've gotten enough stairs. So, um, unless I don't have enough footage of me frolicking in the final look, uh, I'll see you back inside. Oh, okay. Um, we did it. That was the transformation. Um, I think it went pretty well. I had a lot of fun. Um, the harness worked pretty well. Things I guess I could have done differently. I really wish the tabs on the harness were bigger because it was a lot of um, struggling to get this all situated and to keep it that way. And then my, hold on. Um, my sleeve supports, um, the straps on them were just a tad too short, so I couldn't use them, which causes them to show, which is not great. But um, I think everything else was awesome. I do wish the dress itself was a little bit longer, um, and you can see my petticoat a little bit in some shots, but like that's why I was wearing the uh, silver one, so I mean it's a ball gown. It's supposed to be short so I can dance, um, but I do kind of wish it was a little longer so I just could get just a little bit more volume. I played around with a like hybrid bum pad, but I didn't really like the way it kind of pushed the limits of the like tulip shaped skirt um, that I was working with. But all in all, I would wear this again. I would um, obviously fix the sleeve support straps so it fits appropriately um, and I would feel comfortable wearing this to any um, any 1830s ball of any kind um, and I could I guess figure out how to add just a little bit more volume but all in all I think it w works really nicely I love these little bows um, and I could switch them out with stuff which is really nice they're not sewn into the garment they're just pinned in um, and I really like it. So, yes. Oh, it's so hot. Oh my god. Okay. I'm actually sweating from head to toe. I wish I could have stayed outside a little bit longer. Um, I went to Starbucks. <sighs> this is a lot of coffee. Um, I really like push push the limits of that because I was getting it was just, it's so hot. It's only like 80 degrees today, but I'm I'm sweating head to toe um and i would like to lay down and <laughs> take off all my layers so if you enjoyed the process or want to see more of my content you can hit like and subscribe uh and i guess the bell i never use the bell i think it tells you when i make a video i've also heard it doesn't work feel free to hit the bell if you want um i've also linked my social media mostly just my instagram in the description somewhere on the screen I don't know how this works <laughs> um, so you can see uh, what I'm doing and when I upload next uh, so tune in and keep your eyes open uh, for my other content I really have to take this off now I don't want to but I do oh uh, okay bye Okay, before I go, kind of wanted to do like a hair accessories tour because there's just so much going on. Um, so I have this choker from Topshop, which is working like a little diadem. Um, I have fake flower one, and then these are shoe clips that I went ahead and put in. My grandmother's brooch on a ribbon, and the back. Can you can you see? Um, so I have this Greek key ribbon that I got for free when I was buying brocaded ribbon for garters. So I wanted to just put that in my hair for a little spice and then my little curled chicken feathers. And then some vintage earrings and a contemporary necklace. That's actually one of those layered necklaces, but I like this part. And then I have the rest in the back. So it's just this like very cute layer situation. Oh, and my snake ring.
which is also a modern purchase, like a modern, obviously it's a modern purchase, I'm a modern person, but. Oh, and I was wearing velvet gloves from Urban Outfitters. My fan is a 1930s or 40s celluloid fan that I got off Etsy. It's a little flimsy to, you know, work. It's a little bit too flimsy, but it's great. It's like that perfect, like, 1830s little baby fan um, shape. So I love it. And there's this really beautiful kind of etching on it. Can you see? Yeah. A little really cute ribbon on the inside. I love this thing. Your accessories don't have to be absolutely historical. I don't mean to like knock everyone over the head with that sentiment. Okay, yeah, okay, bye. <laughs> also, yes, I do have a replica of uh, Andrew, the Flame of the West. Oh. It was a birthday present slash quarantine present to myself. Chime off below if you were also a massive nerd. I just have to show this off. Look, look, look. The runes are in it. Are you joking? And then the pommel also has elven. Um, mm, I forget the actual proper name for the language. But um, yeah, there's runes on the pommel and the blade. And it's so cool. It's way too big for me. But that's kind of the appeal, in my opinion. Um, stay tuned for a garment to match, match the sword. It might be cosplay. It might be medieval inspired. I don't know. Stay tuned. Um. Ooh, this smells really nice. What the heck? <laughs> Smell good. And stay cool. Um, okay. Um. Oh, I think that's good. 